couple bits of information to update you with. Uh, for one thing, City of Conspiracy, if you remember yesterday, the girl was in horrible trouble. She has been saved. You guys don't have to worry about that. Uh, second point, uh, Black Hollow Project this morning had a dead drop that was picked up. And if you want to take a look at it during one of the breaks, it is back there at the table with a lot of people waving and uh, flailing their arms. Uh, final bit of, um, uh, final note for you guys. If you have contributed something to the Art Museum, please pick it up at some point during uh, the day before the panels end because we are going to be packing that up as much as possible because um, we do not have this room for ages. Uh, having said that, we're going to start up the panels and I'm going to turn it over to Rick. You're my hero. Thank you, everyone. Good morning. Um, well, okay. <laughs> okay, uh, this morning my talk's going to be uh, Remaking the Wheel, Building the Audience for Interactive Fiction. Um, now, in general, when we take in media, if you think about it, um, we just instantly dive into media these days. Because, for example, with a book, once you've learned to read when you're little, you don't need to be retaught unless you're learning another language or something like that. Not that I'm not anything about that. Um, you know, I don't, you know, J.C. Hutchins is not giving out, uh, you know, along with his book, he's not giving out the, how do you read words? <laughs> you know, similarly, um, from the get-go, right when we're born, we're born observing things, we're born watching things, we don't need to be shown, this is how you watch a movie, this is how you watch a television show, this is how you watch a play, anything, you know. Um, video games are a little different because we don't necessarily have formal training in terms of how we play video games. But um, in a more mimetic sense, in the you know, pieces of cultural information being passed down from one person or another, we are teaching, you know, when it's like, oh, come over and play this video game. Okay, you press the right trigger to shoot, you press the X button to jump. And moreover, since we keep the control schemes consistent, you know, once you've learned one control scheme, for most games of that type, you're already, you know how to play. You know, once you've learned how to play Doom, you know how to play Quake. Once you know how to play Quake, you know how to play Team Fortress 2. Once you know how to play Team Fortress 2, you know how to have 17-year-olds call you all sorts of terrible things. <laughs> um, however, alternate reality games are all different. Um, each one, we have to teach people how, we to, how to play. How are you playing this ARG? When I played Perplex City, I had to learn a completely different skill set than what we tried to teach people for The Wall Will Fall. Um, both of those are different from uh, the uh, from the um, drop we had today, or uh, the, uh, the uh, conspiracy from yesterday. But and every single person would have a completely different story about how you play our game, how you take in our game. Um, and really, the commonality between all the other types of media versus ours is that society is teaching us how to uh, to do these things. You know, by watching other people, we learn how to take in, you know, films and TV and just through our own observation. Society at large, thankfully, is teaching people, yes, reading is good. You need to know how to read. You know, video, you know, mimetically, society is teaching us how to play video games. Because let's, uh, I would like to show you hands. How many people have read an instruction manual for a video game in the last 12 months? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, I saw, you know, a smattering of hands. More than, uh, it actually makes me feel hopeful that that was that many, but, uh, but yes, but ARGs, um, you know, people are coming into these as, you know, teenagers, at, you know, generally like the youngest I've seen is like, like we had one player who was 12, um, and he was an outlier, he's a significant outlier. There are people who are coming to this, you know, as high school students, college students, adults, and um, as such, we, uh, you know, we have to, the society at large isn't teaching people how to play. The community of ARG players does help things along. You know, Unfiction, you go on to Unfiction and there are people like, oh, you're new to ARGs, this is kind of you know, what's going on. But ultimately, each player is teaching, them, uh, teaching themselves how to play as they go along. And really, for inter alternative, re <clears throat> alternate reality games and interaction fiction, we, uh, not only do we have to teach them every single time, um, this is actually a good thing. Um, but he here's why we have to do it every single time. First off, um, you can never, ever assume 
that you're dealing with a veteran, uh, you're going to be dealing with a cadre of veterans. Um, one of the advantages that, like for example, J.C. Hutchins again, I'm going to keep using you as an example. Um, you know, he doesn't have to worry about teaching people to read because less than one percent of the people reading his book, that's going to be their first time reading a book in English. You know, I don't have to worry. You know, if I was to publish a book right now, you know, maybe like five people in history, all of human history, will say this is the first book in English I've ever read. How do I read this? Uh, meanwhile, with ARGs. Um, I bet across the board we could say like at least 50% of our of the people taking in our ARG, this is their first ARG. Uh, with the wall will fall, I think the number was north of 85-90% of our players were first time art players. You know, so, you know, we had to teach people. Um, not only that, but you can't assume that, you know, similarly you can't assume that, you know, just because they played another art before that it's even remotely similar to yours. Um, okay, for example, what if happened every time we had a novel, you know, you didn't know how that novel was published. One novel was published, you know, uh, all the words are written left to right, and you know, you flip, uh, flip pages from left to right. But then, you know, another novel, all the words are written from the top to the bottom, and you have to flip from right to, le uh, right to left. You know, could you, or, you know, or another novel, the chapters are all there, and they're numbered correctly, but they're not actually in chapter order. All of a sudden you have to page, you know, you read chapter one and all of a sudden it says, go to page 274 for chapter two. You know, if that is just like a microcosm of what kind of differences we do when we do ARGs. So, you know, and not and most of all, um, ARG, uh, alternate reality games and, and transmedia slash interactive fiction, whatever term we're using today, um, it's still in its infancy. Um, right now, when we look at, uh, look at it, um, ArcFest is just about as old as ARG's proper art, about 10 years. Um, you know, every other media type that, we, that I described earlier, that's at least like three or four generations of production that have gone on. Even video games. Video games started getting made in like the 1950s at, at uh, Brookhaven Institute. Um, you know, very, very, very basic version of Palm uh, on an oscilloscope that was like four inches wide. <laughs> wide. <laughs> um, but yeah, video, uh, video games are the newest one, and we can trace that to the 1950s. ARGs, um, this is a, a brand new medium, and we're 10 years old. So at this point, you know, we have, uh, we're, you know, the reason why we don't have society teaching this is because it's a brand new medium, and society is still looking at us and going, well, what are you? So basically, the simplest way to put it, um, the act of taking a fiction in the, is the original definition of a meme, as I said, a culture of information being passed on from person to person, you know, so, uh, but both transmitted uh, sideways within the generations, and it will see, and it, we will soon see this uh, down the generations. Um, you know, Zoe, uh, Zoe over there, my daughter at home named Zoe, the, uh, these, uh, these kids later on are going to be the generations that pick up the memes from us on how to play alternate reality games. And right now, since uh, we, each time we make an uh, ARG, you know, we, uh, <clears throat> we teach a new to reinforce the development of the meme, and there we're going to create this culture, and also create it within culture as large, what we're going to do. Now, um, to, uh, just to dive in for a few examples from The Wall Will Fall, in terms of you know, how we actually taught well, and also we're going to start off with how we didn't teach well. We're going to start off with something that Tom brought up yesterday, the announcement of the wall will fall. Now, when we first announced, we decided that the announcement would be this big banner at the top of TV tropes that said, a great announcement for Mr. Administrator. Um, and it was in this particular, you know, it was this banner that was literally on top of every single TV tropes page. It was uh, this particular noticeable green color when nothing else in the site is green. Um, you had to notice it. There were a few things we didn't keep in mind. Number one, this was the exact same uh, notice that we had for uh, private messages. So, you know, people were like, oh, I have a private message, and it's really important, it's from the administration. Um, so that was, uh, you know, there's a lot of people like, oh, I'm, I need to know about this. Wait, this is a what? <laughs> um, moreover, a big problem is TV Tropes had actually just gone through a second I issue where they had lost Google ads for the due to content that some of the editors had put on the site. Um, and this, uh, this second, the second Google incident, as I was called, um, it threatened the site's existence. And it was widely believed that, especially since it was so recent, if there was a third Google uh, incident, there'd be no more TV tropes. The third Google incident would have been the, uh, the end of TV tropes. 
So consequently, everyone thought we were seeing the, a third Google incident, and they flipped out. And ultimately, what we did wrong, we realized that we realized eventually what we did wrong is that an ARG is ultimately a blending of reality versus the fiction we're creating. But the problem is, is you need time for people to go down the rabbit hole. You need time for people to acclimate to that alternate reality. We basically tried to throw everybody in instantly. And um, that caused mass hysteria. You know, it really was, uh, <laughs> uh, and sometimes I wonder if how we managed to actually get past just the announcement issue. Uh, we did eventually correct it in that we changed the banner to gray. We told people, oh, TV Tropes is not going away. Nothing's going to be wrong. But it was still, you know, the damage was done. And it did affect things uh, for a little bit afterwards. Um, basically, though, you have time to you have time to blur the fiction reality. You have time to pull people completely in. You just need to make people have the first step and let them take each step on their own. Um, next, another one that was brought up yesterday uh, was the creation of the meta guards. Uh, basically, um, as we were, as Tom was mentioning earlier, uh, players were getting really antsy because. There was some stuff going on, and they found it interesting. There was a few characters, um, but really there wasn't too much for the players to interact with. At the time, we had three characters, really. We had um, Mr. Administrator, who was you know, imperious and people didn't trust for very good reason. We had um, Average Joe, a blogger who was discovering that pieces of fiction were bleeding into reality. And he was a nice guy, but he was you know, only sporadically doing a web show called uh, Watch the Footage. Um, and then we had one character who was out and about, the Cheshire Cat from Alice in Wonderland. And he's fun, but the Cheshire Cat is also, well, who, I think we are all familiar with uh, Alice in Wonderland, correct? You know what the Cheshire Cat is like. <laughs> um, the Cheshire Cat is kind of just an excuse, it was almost like an excuse for us to troll people while giving clues. <laughs> Um, so people were wondering, like, well, what are we going to do? Should we even bother with this? There's nothing going on. And that's when um, one of our players, a fellow from Russia who went by the name Dryunia, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, probably not, um, he was like, well, what if we create, uh, what if we help create guards to keep things from going on across the wall? And we're like, sure, that sounds great. And what we were doing there, we realized, we realized as we were, uh, we were saying this was acceptable, was we were going to teach them what they needed to know later on. Um, and this was very important because arts will need to basically see the skills that you need to do uh, in order to be able to make the game happen. Um, ultimately, you know, the puzzles, the puzzles are, you know, if you're going to do something very puzzle oriented, you start with some simple puzzles of the variety that you want for your big puzzles later on. Um, matter of fact, possibly one of the things that, that, that hurt us was that, you know, near the end of the game, we were basically, we were doing some dead drops. Players weren't used to the dead drops and all of a sudden, uh, how do we do this? Um, and thank God for the uh, for uh, guest user seventeen who got the name <laughs> Batman on our forms for a very good reason. <laughs> he, you know, he was able. Uh, he was a champ. He, uh, you know, he gathered people all across the country to start looking for these things, and he found so many of them. I, I thank God every day for him. <laughs> um, but uh, at the same time, though, when it came time for writing the fiction, at, by the end they were fiction machines. Um, like, I think ultimately, um, if I'm allowed to reveal the, the, the uh, numbers we were looking at the end, we were looking for like 20, uh, like 10 or 20 good pieces of fiction in order to say, you know, yes, Dell will be saved from Cthulhu. We got over 30. You know, they blew everything out of the water. Um, so again, you need to teach people at the beginning what you need them to do at the end. Um, now, for one thing that uh, we, pro uh, we basically teased yesterday uh, <laughs> you know, for game jacking, uh, very specifically, uh, and, and something I'll make all the veterans groan, reality ends. Um, the, uh, he uh, spelled reality ends in inverted case, lowercase r, lowercase e, everything else capitalized. Um, there was a Twitter account for someone who uh, just started tweeting at the various people who were involved in the game. Um, and uh, he was in, acting antagonistic on various levels to various characters, like Mr. Administrator, uh, you know, they, they, he was trying to go out and hammer tongs with him. He was trying to tease Cheshire Cat the same way that uh, Cheshire Cat was te 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 um, teasing everyone else, and he was uh, and he was kind of like pitying, like, "Oh, you poor fool," towards uh, uh, Average Joe. 
And uh, players thought this was totally real, especially because it was an antagonistic faction being uh, introduced immediately towards the, you know, the, the not so trustworthy guy that we had set up in the first place. And everyone's like, oh, this is interesting. That's what the GMs are doing. And, I, and you know, it's like, oh, this is a part of the game. But it wasn't part of the game, was, you know. And the rest of us were like, uh, what's going on now? The problem that we had, uh, which you should keep in mind not to do for yourself, is you need to establish what, uh, some way to establish for certain what's part of the game. The big problem we had was that we were trying to be a little subtle and hinting that he wasn't part of the game. Eventually, what had to happen was Dana had to come in and say, if Mr. Administrator doesn't recognize whoever it is in 24 hours, they're not part of the game. And she did that right as the problem was starting to metasize. We actually, like, about less than 24 hours uh, before she said that, there were like four or five more Twitter accounts that were trying to be, uh, that were trying to game jack as well. And we didn't want the whole game to get away from us. And thankfully, because she said that, people will start paying attention to, uh, to Mr. Administrator. It's like, oh, is this real? Is this real? You know, he'll, he'll recognize even an antagonist. And when we didn't recognize reality ends, it, it was, uh, you know, it was like, okay, this guy is not actually part of the game. He's a player. And at the same time, though, we uh, tried to engage reality ends because we had to figure out, are you a troll? Or are you just not knowing what's going on? When we engaged reality, it turned out that reality didn't know it all. Like, that's what reality thought the game would be. They thought that they could, could that they would play by creating this character. Um, it's actually a little unfortunate. To one extent, it's a little unfortunate because the player base really turned on reality. And uh, but you know, it's not. It wasn't reality's fault. Reality just uh, made a guess, and it happened. And reality happened to guess wrong. Um, but you know, my my hope is, is that you know, the reality will continue to play IRGs and will you know will be a little more cautious in the future about how do you play this game. Uh, finally, uh, one thing in terms of I don't want to harp on just our mistakes. One thing that uh, we did early on that I thought was really good was uh, the establishment of a YouTube video, um, puppets.mp4. As I was describing earlier, um, we had a uh, you know we had the uh, our average Joe who was doing a video blog on YouTube about you know the various characters from fiction completing its reality, and this was kind of neat because you know it gave the players someone that they could actually attach to and associate with, and someone that they really uh, you know they really liked. But then they were starting to get like, hmm, I wonder where this is going. I don't know. I wonder if something, if X will happen. I wonder if Y will happen. And what we did was, uh, if I can have a little help with this, um, they established a, oh, okay. So is it under Chrome? Yeah. Okay, excellent. Um, let's see. You guys both doing this at the same time. Okay, yeah, here I will show this video, which was put up, like as opposed to the other pieces, um, you know, where it had an intro with Joe and whatnot, this was put up completely on its own. And I'll show this for you. Uh, can you get the lights real quick? Um, it's only 13 seconds. So probably... <laughs> awesome. Okay. It's hard to hear, but there's also random beeps and whatnot in the background. Did, did, did folks get to see it? Show Do it again. again. Okay, yeah, all right. Um, this time I'll give you a, a bit of a hint. When the camera pans to the right, look in the background. You, you see, okay, one more time, I'll tell you specifically. It was like the, that kid in the background of the three minute old <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, uh, all right. This time I'll tell you. This time I'll tell you so that way when you see it, uh, you bang the you know because there were people who watched it like ten times before they they finally saw. I'll tell you this time. Um, when you when it pans over to the second puppet, when you look in the background, the first puppet, the first puppet's eye is moving. Okay. You know, and of course with the beeping, which was a little louder than the original version. Yeah, see it, see it wiggling wow. around. Wow. <laughs> yeah, there. Oh, who said you? I love that. <laughs> okay, uh, lights up. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Let's get out of this. So, there we go. Okay. 
Now the, 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 the fun part was, you know, people, first off, were watching that five to ten times where they were getting it. And there was that great moment when all the first person on the appropriate thread of TV tropes uh, was finally going, Oh God, the eye! <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then of course, like, once that one person said it, everyone got it. And you know, since so like, oh my God, what happened to Joe? The puppets have killed him, you know? <laughs> they had people freaking out. Matter of fact, we actually always had, we had to like, you might have saw there was a little dialogue box saying at the corners, like, we were I'm okay, I'll explain in a minute, you know, um, which was, uh, but uh, the important, what we did right there was we created the atmosphere, we actually set the atmosphere for the game, because before that, you know, there was a lot of, the, the first part of the game, a lot of questions. Once we introduced the terror-inducing uh, the terror -inducing video, reaching the people's primal fears about what their dolls are going to do when they sleep, um, that's when people started to get the feel for the game. We, uh, you know, they didn't know what they were supposed to do. They didn't know what, if they, where they should act and whatnot. All of a sudden, they had an impetus. They knew that they needed to act because not everything that was going to go over the uh, the fourth wall was going to be okay. You know, it's not all going to be the Cheshire Cat being, you know, telling goofy riddles on over Twitter. You know, it was going to be some scary stuff. It was going to be some creepy stuff. You know, and there was, at, you know, maybe maybe Mr. Administrator isn't completely honest, but there is a danger involved. Plus, also, it, it, you know, another thing that we did, this wasn't necessarily what we intended, but it was a great bonus. It showed people that they, how much they cared about Joe. At first, it was like, oh, Joe is interesting. You know, he's helping us out. He's got some stuff going on. All of a sudden, people were like, oh, God, what happened to Joe? Joe, please be OK. I want to hug you. <laughs> um, and you know, once people create that intimate connection to a character, they are, they are in. They are in your story. They are going to play your arc through. And even the people who aren't necessarily as attached, they're going to keep watching because like, hey, that, you know, what's going on? I've got to keep watching this. So, you know, and also, finally, it also showed, you know, it also gave players this idea that, wait, if we don't do things, there's going to be consequences. And players should always understand that, you know, no matter what happens, action or inaction, there may be consequences. And even though in this case they didn't have to worry about consequences, they knew that in the future there would be some. So, you know, in conclusion, uh, we are still building this medium. We are still creating the first generation of, of ours. I'm probably going to be doing so for another five to ten years. Um, and honestly, it's a thrill. You know, I'm, uh, you know, if you've seen what, some of the stuff I've tweeted and whatnot, it's like, oh my god, look at all this is happening. This is so awesome. We're so creative. Um, but you know, at this time, we still need to remember every single time this is what we're creating. This is what we're building. Not just our game, but this entire genre. And by understanding that, we build the audience, we are building the culture, and we are building the understanding. Okay, um, and if there are anyone who has questions, I think we're ready. All right, Rick, thank you very much. I'm gonna ask you the age-old question, um, and framing around the hypothetical that uh, for whatever reason, you launch a game and it becomes very popular for the specific <laughs> large group of people. Um, how would you, as a, as a game master, adapt for scale in such a case? Well, okay, it, it, okay. in this mythical situation where all of a sudden we got like 10, even a hundred times of what we would have done, how we would have adapted for scale, for one thing, we would have made the puzzles a lot harder. Um, you know, because it was one thing when you say, okay, we have a hundred people, there are, uh, you know, that are really dedicated to the game, um, you know, and there's, and, you know, when you go and say, okay, well, we have people this education level for the most part, and we have this, we have to do puzzles in this vein. Um, we would have probably made the, the puzzles a lot more complex, um, a lot more pieces. We would have been a lot slower with the uh, information drops and the puzzle drops. So that way, you know, they've got these big puzzles and they have to really work at it and they have to wait a little bit. You know, whereas with the smaller group, we could, uh, we could afford to do the, uh, we could, you know, give them a little simpler puzzles to make sure they could actually advance the story in time. Um, Plot-wise, well, it's difficult to say because, uh, you know, we, I would have liked, you know, it's one thing to say, oh, I would have loved to have more characters, but, you know, we had a budget, we had, uh, you know, time constraints and whatnot. 
Um, as much as I would have loved to have brought on more people to do more characters, to have more, more engagement with them, uh, we actually already had a pretty large team. We had, you know, in terms of the dedicated writing staff and whatnot, we had, what, 15, 20 people? Um, which is pretty large for, uh, for an independent arc. Um, you know, we could have theoretically added more people or more of us could have taken on more characters, but, um, you know, we were already kind of stretching our budget pretty thin. I don't know how well that would have worked. I was wondering where it's a way you were just shit on it. And you set off on what about way for it. And so like a couple of years ago I proposed the idea that there was like a labeling system to orientate people to the type of AOG that there was a 